It has uh, been a wonderful uh, opportunity. At times, we do not realize how much we need uh, time to connect with our families, communities, and uh, our other activities than um, you know, our uh, activities as per our deployment. So I've um, spent a lot of time with the family. I've had time, and these things are called gardening leaves. Indeed, I do have a garden. So I've spent a lot of time in the garden. I, it's a garden. Uh, I would have called it a garden, but now I w I'm tempted to call it a farm because yeah. it's not only the garden. Yeah. There are also um, a few animals, uh, a little bit of everything that a farm would have, but a very small operation. That has kept me very busy. That has also given me time to uh, you know, do some church work. Uh, my church needs me a lot. I also chair a small hospital board um, around here and a small community-based organization on uh, early childhood development. So all of those have actually you know, uh, received a lot of my attention during the past four months. Let's rewind a bit now. When and how did you find out that the president was going to remove you from your position? On the day of removal, on the 9th of, uh, of uh, December. Were you shocked to find out on the same day that you were going to be removed? And did you ever anticipate that removal? I never anticipated the removal, but I think it is in the nature of our deployment. I used to say to people that our deployment, people always say we are um, ministers are deployed for five years. I used to say jokingly that uh, ministers are not deployed for five years, are deployed over for 24 hours. Uh, because the president can remove you anytime and the president can appoint you um, at any time. But it, w it came as a shock though? Well, look, not entirely as a shock, um, because the, as I'm saying, you need to expect this from time to time. Uh, but um, of course, I did not expect it. How long did your meeting with the president last? <laughs> Indeed, it was very short. There has been a lot of speculation about some of the reasons which led to President Zuma removing you. Some people cite the issue of a SAA Airbus deal, nuclear deal or nuclear energy power program. Was the president specific when he informed you about your removal? What were the reasons that he gave you? Well, the, the reason advanced by the president was in relation to the, uh, to the new deployment, and that is the uh, statement, a public statement that the president made, and I have no reason to speculate uh, on any other reason other than what the president said. When are you starting that job? Well, I would be, it would be unfair to expect of him to follow that through because uh, ultimately it is now the, <coughs> the BRICS bank. The bank is an entity on its own. The country, in my view, only nominates, and, um, and then there are processes within the bank that uh, are unfolding. Um, unfortunately, I haven't heard from the bank uh, to this point. During that discussion with the president, did he ask for your views or he merely informed you that, look, I'm going to remove you because I'm deploying you or I'm eyeing you for that strategic deployment? Did he ask for your views? What's your take on this? Look, Spamadla, uh, even when you are deployed as minister, your views, uh, <laughs> there is hardly time to discuss your views, even if you do have views. Um, it's uh, a matter of communicating the message from the president and, um, you know, as uh, loyal uh, cadres of the movement, you also don't question the president's wisdom. Uh, and therefore, I, there, were no, there was no discussion. Were you surprised by that economic chaos which followed your removal? Well, of course I was, but um, I then took it that, look, um, we are in a global economic village and uh, whatever happens in our country, uh, you know, will have an impact. Uh, in, in, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the markets. And um, of course, I was surprised by um, the magnitude because I, I would have thought that uh, as a mere mortal, uh, it would, even if there was a movement in the markets, it would be something that would be short-lived. But uh, indeed, I was uh, a bit taken aback. Our highly placed sources tell us that your unemployment days are about to be over very soon. In fact, by the end of this week, our sources tell us that you will start a new job and it's got nothing to do with BRICS Bank or the new development bank. Is that true? Who are your new employers and what would be your exact role? Well, I can say uh, Spamandla is watch the space. Um, I, I, at the moment, uh, my wife is my employer here <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't want to wrap her the wrong way until I know where I'm going. 
because she might actually decide to get rid of me before I, I um, assume <laughs> uh, whatever new uh, responsibilities I'm about to. Are you starting a new job soon? Is it the banking sector or the insurance sector? Well, the, <laughs> the long and short answer to that one is um, I can't give you a response yet. You know, uh, let me repeat this. It's not wise to talk about your future employment before you are employed. And you allow the announcement to be made by your future employer or your future principal, because I'm not too sure whether this is employment uh, or, uh, I mean, <laughs> call it employment, but, uh, well, my gardening leave uh, is going to end shortly. This week? Shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Your former Deputy Minister Mtebisi Jonas confirmed that he was once offered your job two weeks before you were removed. What do you make of that statement? Were you surprised by that? Did he ever approach you to say, Minister, I'm being approached by certain people, they are offering me your job, what's happening? That's a matter that the ANC is seized with and um, any public pronouncements from my side on that matter would also um, have an impact on, on the current, uh, uh, you know. I don't, I don't want to call it an investigation, mm. but it's a matter that is being looked into, and I would want to allow that process to unfold and uh, conclude the matter. But did he approach you and you discussed it without going into the details? Look, that's part of uh, looking into the matter, and I wouldn't want to uh, get into, in, in, into that. But uh, it was uh, quite surprising that anybody outside of government um, could uh, venture into offering a government job uh, to anybody. There is another term which many people in South Africa are seized with. They call it state capture. And central to that is the issue of your former institution, National Treasury. Allegations have been made about certain individuals, families and groupings trying to get their hold onto that institution. During your tenure there, did you witness anything which you would call an undue interference or influence people asking you to do certain things for them? Not uh, that I know of. I mean, you would get approaches um, through normal channels, in my view. And uh, if anybody tried that with the Treasury, I would imagine they probably must have been very subtle. Uh, because our, our view was that we were a solid department and um, I still uh, hold the National Treasury in very high regard in terms of being the custodians of the public finance management and all other uh, governance um, uh, uh, tenets of um, the South African Constitution and the law. Have you ever been approached by the Guptas? Have you ever met them, whether when you were still the Deputy Minister or the Minister, were you ever asked to do certain things for the Gupta family? Look, I bumped into them in uh, public gatherings um, once or twice, but um, I've never had a, um, an, en uh, an engagement and I've never been asked by them to do anything for them. Nkandla is literally 25 to 30 minutes from where we are sitting, where we are having this interview. Basically, President Zuma is your neighbor. Was it awkward to be fired by your neighbor? Not really, because uh, I, take that, I take it that our um, relationship was um, a professional one, uh, but also a political one. And therefore, it is not about the proximity of your uh, you know, domiciles. It is uh, more about uh, the nature of responsibilities that, uh, responsibilities that we are each given. And if he has a responsibility to deploy people to uh, different positions, I accepted that as, uh, uh, as a given. How is that relationship now? Well, it's, it remains um, uh, professional, and um, I respect that. And I'm actually, if I were to say this also, I'm truly grateful to the President and the African National Congress for having given me an opportunity to serve the South African uh, uh, community. And uh, in doing so, it has also given me uh, you know, no, no amount of money would buy me the experience that I've actually uh, got over the period. It is that profile that when we talk today of some of the offers that I have actually been getting, that otherwise I wouldn't have had it not been for the ANC and the President for having given me the opportunity to serve uh, uh, South Africa. In the future, given that opportunity, would you accept another deployment to join government? Look, it, it would depend um, at what point that finds me, because you would know that with... Uh, my future principles, there would be some commitments that I will have made that would 
the, not make it easy for me to, to jump ship until such time that I have followed due processes. You have spoken about the revenue collection, which involves obviously SARS, and currently there are tensions between Minister Godan and Commissioner Moyane. You have worked with both of them. What do you think of that tension? I think uh, both of them have the interests of the country at heart. Uh, so it's not about their personalities. It, it's about the issues at hand. And I think the um, fact that um, the president himself has indicated that he is seized with the matter to make sure that that is resolved uh, uh, as amicably as possible uh, in the interests of South Africa. How did your family handle your removal? A bit of, uh, you know, concern as to whether there was um, anything wrong that I might have done. But um, the family also was very quick to celebrate the fact that, uh, you know, if I were to quote my youngest daughter's words, who when I walked in here on, I mean, the following day on the 10th, said, uh, is it true that we now have 100% of you? Because otherwise they, they only had um, less than 10% of me. So, and uh, the family was very supportive, um, and uh, the family has also stood with me in making sure that, uh, you know, the time between then and now, uh, you know, keeps me as busy as possible. Uh, I always say I have actually been sentenced to hard labor here, mm -hmm. and I've uh, enjoyed every bit of it. Despite what has happened, many people say, look, the country's economy is going through a very difficult and challenging period. Others claim that you were a good finance minister. You were allegedly removed for your hard work. There are those who say, actually, the economy was performing dismally under you. The rent was weakening. Everything was a mess. Two downgrades, if I'm not mistaken. They say, actually, you were a terrible finance minister. Well, that's for um, um, the facts to judge me because the negative aspects that I've referred to also that still pertain with uh, the, um, uh, the world itself, the global economy going through what it is going, I uh, accept the fact that um, perhaps uh, it wasn't the best of times that I served in. Um, I remember at one point when Minister Gordon was appointed Minister Manuel uh, joked that uh, some people, <coughs> excuse me, uh, know when to, to leave their jobs and some people don't know when to take up their jobs. And I think um, we also had a similar situation when uh, I took uh, over from uh, Minister Gordon. But um, we did the best we could uh, during my tenure and I still think the team is doing um, exceedingly well um, under Minister Gordon's um, um, uh, redeployment into that department. When you were removed, some people took to the streets and they said President Zuma must fall. What is your view on that aspect of it? And also, are you able to comment on the latest Concord judgment on the security upgrades at Nkanya? Look, a lot of people have actually uh, uh, taken advantage of um, um, my removal. And um, um, I would uh, also, um, I don't think I'd be making a mistake when I say some of them have actually abused that um, uh, my removal uh, in order to uh, serve their own um, ulterior motives. And I want to believe that it's not all of them um, that uh, would have wanted me to stay that are now all of a sudden, uh, um, you know, concerned about my removal. But I would want to believe that um, the political environment is such that um, People would use every opportunity to attack um, the president, the ANC, and um, the current uh, government uh, in order to uh, gain the, the political mileage that otherwise they don't have the leverage on. But I would want to believe that um, I think it, the, the matter was uh, uh, taken completely out of context by some people, and um, I, I don't believe all of them were genuine. Are you still an ANC member? Indeed. In good standing, loyal, and <laughs> my vote is not secret. Do you think you acted in a good manner to protect the country's fiscus? I did everything possible to protect the country's fiscus um, with the available um, um, means and, um, and tools at our disposal. I just want to be clear. You are not taking up that Briggs Bank job. The Briggs Bank job has not come up.